everyone, and today we're going to be talking about the Naive Bayes Classifier. And before we get into that, we should talk about what the Bayesian rule is, because that's what the Naive Bayes Classifier is actually based around, right? So the Bayesian rule, right, is simply the fact that the probability of A, right, of seeing a, any event A, given that you've seen events B, is the same as the probability of B, given A, right, times the probability of A divided by the probability of B, right? And this part over here is called the posterior, right? Because that's your posterior, the probability of A given B, because that's what the probability is after you calculate all these odds out, right? Probability of B given A is the likelihood of seeing um, B given A, right? And the probability of A is just the prior probability of the A, right? So what does this mean in terms of classification? Well, imagine that um, and we're going to deviate a little bit from the Allstate data that we used in the last video and instead talk about like news, right? So we're trying to take a piece of news or document of some sort and we're trying to classify what the topic of that document is, right? So you can think about it that the, the, what we're saying is the probability of A, given that we've seen a whole bunch of words, right, about the topic, is the same as the probability of any of those words appearing given that the article is actually about that topic times the basic probability of that topic ever existing divided by the probability of that word ever existing, right? Or that word ever being used, right? Um, and so we're basically saying that the probability that a particular document is on a topic is simply a composition of the probabilities of the rules, of the words being on, generated by that particular topic. Okay. So here's another way of saying it, right? In a news article, we want to decide if the category is sports or politics. Well, we could look at the words, right? If we see the word tennis in a news article, then it is highly likely that the article is about sports, right? If we see the words point and win in a news article, then it's likely to be about sports, probably. But it might still be about politics, especially the word win, right? Um, and if, if we see the word election... It's probably nothing to do with sports, and it's very likely to be about politics. So if we see tennis and points, right, then it's going to be sports. If we see win and election, then it's going to be politics, most likely. That's kind of the basic idea of how we're going to build this classifier. Now, um, as I mentioned, right, the Bayesian classifier uses the Bayesian probability of seeing a class given the evidence. Now, it, it turns out you don't actually have to worry about this probability of X, or in our original slide, it was the probability of B that we talked about, right? Uh, because we can just kind of normalize that away. We can kind of just say that it's roughly the same as seeing the probability of those words in all the documents that we see, right? And so really then, the probability of any class, right, of sports or politics, given X1 through Xn, right, is the probability of X1 through Xn given the class, right, and then we can eventually break that down into the probability of X1 given X2 through N given in that class and so forth. So we can kind of continue to deconstruct this probability, uh, but we still have to throw in this probability of the class at the end, right? Um, and that's assuming that there's all these joint probabilities. That's like the correct ways of building the Bayesian classifier. And Naive Bayes, we're going to disregard a whole bunch of that, right? That is really difficult to compute, it turns out. It's really difficult to compute, right, the probability of seeing, for instance, the word sport, or sorry, seeing the word tennis given election and points, right, um, in the class of sports, right? Um, and you can imagine that, especially when we're talking about a document that has maybe a thousand words in it, this Xn is a thousand and just calculating all those probabilities becomes very difficult to do, right? So what, what do we do instead? Well, we're gonna make the naive assumption that the probability that any word is generated by any class is independent of all the other words in the same document, right? So what that allows us to do is instead of doing x1 given x2 through n, x2 given through x3 to n, and so forth, we can just look at the probability, what is the probability x1 given that the article is about this particular topic? What is the probability of x2 given the article is about this particular, x3, right? We don't have to worry about the joint probability question, right? What is the probability x1 given all these other words and that we see this particular initial probability? And so then, 
we can simply take the probability of that class ever being served. So how many sports and news versus uh, politics articles have we ever seen in the past, right? Times the multiplication of all the probabilities of those words given that class in the past. So for instance, how many times do we see election given the fact that it was actually a politics or given the fact that it was actually a, a, a um, sports subject, right? So once we do that, we can compute the probability that this particular new article that we've never seen before is of a particular cast given all those past word, given all the words based upon this multiplication, right? And then once we do that, we then simply iterate over all our topics and we assign to the new document, the document which maximizes this, this multiplication, right? Essentially, right, to maximize the probability. So, and that's what this, this, so this essential equation says, that y hat equals the arg max of the probability of ck times the multiplicand of the, all the other probabilities independently. Um, um, essentially, we're going to assume that each dimension is completely independent. Statistically, naive base makes no sense, right? Because there's all these joint probabilities we should be worried about. But the truth of the matter is, that it actually works pretty darn well in a lot of document classification situations. So in cases where you're trying to classify a particular document, and that could be a tweet, that could be a news article, that could be a, um, a document that was just an email that was sent to you by a customer, right? Given all those different things, now you've based us pretty well at trying to identify the topic. Um, so, you know, basically what we're saying is that if you see the word tennis, you are more likely to see the word point and win. And we know that, right, in truth, right? So the probability of seeing tennis and points is very close to seeing tennis in general, right? Uh, so we should, you know, take all these kind of conditional probabilities into account. But using naive base, we're just going to ignore all that. We're just going to multiply the probability of seeing tennis in sports articles with that of seeing points in the sports articles. Uh, the double counting of all this, be damned. Right? We're just going to calculate them all out, and we're going to get a result. And in the end, we wind up with something that doesn't really make sense as a probability, but it basically works as a way for us to assign the labels. And if you remember back to one of the very first talks in this series, I talked about the fact that machine learning is more concerned with getting the right answer than it is with getting, uh, controlling for the error and showing that you're getting why you're getting that right answer. And naivety works in many of these cases. So that's Naive Bayes. It's another cool little tool that works pretty well in a lot of situations, especially around document classification.